Thank you for joining me. My name is Liz and this is my movement channel with Liz bringing free movement to YouTube. So if you can, I would love it if you hit the subscribe, hit the like button so more people can see this channel, which means more people are getting free movement. However you feel like moving on a particular day, there is something here for you, whether it's yoga flow, whether it's yin yoga, strength training, high intensity interval training, mobility, foam rolling, everything is right here for you and different lengths as well. So there's some longer videos and some shorter videos too. So thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be doing a mobility with a foam rolling session, focusing on the lower body. So if you do a lot of sitting, if you do a lot of training, if you do just a lot of being human, you may possibly have tension and tightness through the muscles, through the connective tissue of the lower body. And it can just feel uncomfortable. It can make movement uncomfortable. It can just make life in general not feel so good or as good as it could if you were doing things to bring more mobility into the area. So today, a short mobility session with some foam rolling, focusing on the lower body, on the hip area, the lower back, the front of the legs, the back of the legs. It's all going to get worked. So we're going to start laying down on our back. So if you do have a foam roller, go and grab that now. Hopefully you kind of clued onto that as I was holding it as it started. So laying down onto your back and just connect into your breath to begin. So the knees can be bent, the feet can be flat on the floor. You can have the legs out long if that feels good. Just let yourself Come into your space, starting to breathe in and out of your nose. Just see if you can let the body relax. So the focus today is on the lower body, but if you feel like there's a little bit of tension up through the shoulders, see if you can let that drop down, let the shoulders relax, the body sink down into the floor. So throughout today's class, we'll be doing a little mix up, a little bit of mobility, a little bit of foam rolling. We'll go back to the mobility and the foam rolling. So just to take it as it comes today. You're gonna hug the knees in towards your chest, hugging them in just as far as they'll come or as far as feels comfortable for you. Still allowing the shoulders to be relaxed. We're gonna add a little bit of movement from here. So grabbing hold of your knees, take a breath in, let the knees move away from the body. The lower back might flatten down into the floor. And then as you breathe out, bringing the knees back in towards the chest. Again, the lower back might be flat to the floor. Doing that again, breathing in, let the knees move away. You might notice a little arch in the lower back is what I was meant to say the first time. And then breathing out, hugging the knees in. Sometimes as a teacher, we say stuff and we think, why did I say that? That wasn't actually correct. So I will correct myself. Breathing in, let the knees move away. Breathing out, hugging the knees in. Do that three more times. And then keep hugging the left knee in. Gonna start to draw some circles with the right knee. So we're gonna go out, down, 
and then back up through center. So we're gonna do that five times in one direction. So take it out wide, foot comes down to the floor and then bring the knee back up. So breathing in, breathing out. See if you can keep the body nice and steady and just focus on getting that movement out and around with the knee. Let's reverse those circles. So we bring the foot down to the floor, we've got a snappy dog in front of me, and we bring it out wide and back up and around. Doing it one more time. And we'll move to the other side. So hug the right knee in, let go of the left knee, and then take that down, out, and around. And just continuing to breathe nice and smoothly. And reverse that. So this would be perfect even for a morning practice or even an evening practice just to calm the body back down, calm the system down, getting ready for bed. Now we're gonna do a little bit of foam rolling now. So you're gonna take the foam roller, so we're gonna focus on the lower back region. So we have a really thick band of fascia down here on the lower back. Also got some beautiful muscles, our spinal erectors, our quadratus lumborum. So we're just gonna to start to come down just to the bottom of the ribcage area and just either rolling down or you can start from the top of our pelvis or our iliac crest and we can roll back up. So just kind of find a position that feels best for you. And you may find that you're even in like a little bit of a, a bridge pose here, using a little bit of effort from the lower body, pressing down into the feet come up a little bit higher in the back that's okay and you can focus more on one side by just leaning into that side a little bit more and come down the mat I'm rolling off the mat <laughs> and when we're foam rolling we want to think slow so don't kind of try and go as fast as you can. Think slow through the tissue. Responds really well to slow movement and to long holds as well. So if you've done some of the yin yoga practices, that's a big focus on the connective tissue. You can even hold onto a spot. So if you think, oh, that feels a little bit interesting or a little bit tender, hold and breathe. Okay, we're gonna come down into our glutes now. So when I'm doing the glutes, I like to face the foam roller long ways and then sit on it so I can kind of roll across the glute muscle. And then the side that I'm doing, I put that foot across the opposite knee and then rolling either from the outside in or to the inside out. And again, we go nice and slow. You might find some spots like I've got just there. See if you can slowly roll over them. And then spend a little bit of time there on those spots, hold, holding and releasing your pressure. Sorry, I almost did a burp. <laughs> releasing the pressure down into the foam roller and breathing nice and smoothly.
pretty cool when we know that we can do this for ourselves. I think a lot of people have foam rollers, myself included, I'm not going to lie. And they become dust collectors. I have one upstairs that I use to sit on and eat my dinner. It's got a nice little dim from my butt in it. Very rarely gets used as an actual foam roller, but they do come in handy for actual foam rolling. So if you do have one, hopefully you're <laughs> joining in and using it and continue to use it as well. And you'll find that after spending a little bit of time rolling, after spending a little bit of time maybe just releasing the tension or releasing the pressure onto a certain spot, that it does start to ease off. And the really cool thing about this is you may notice pain or tension in other areas of your body starts to release or completely goes away. So the glutes sometimes, sometimes the lower back, you can feel like that releases a little bit or even up into your shoulders and your neck. Everything is connected. Beautiful, magical system that we have. I'm gonna to go to the other side now. And you may also find that one side is a little bit more tender than the other side. I know my right side definitely felt that a little bit more. Left side's not too bad. Sorry, is having a good snore. So I recommend doing some form of mobility, doing some form of, if it's stretching or foam rolling, at least three times a week. If you've got time after dinner and you like to watch Netflix, get down on the floor and do it then. The cool thing is a little bit goes a long way. So maybe it's 15 minutes, it's 10 minutes. It's going to have an effect on your body and the way that you feel. Remembering to breathe. And let's release that. We're gonna come down onto our buttocks, doing some mobility through the hamstring. So it's gonna do one side at a time. So lengthen one leg out, I'm gonna do my right leg first, have the left foot pressing into the right thigh, sitting up nice and tall. Now the purpose of this is not to just kind of mindlessly move in and out. We wanna keep the spine long and think like you're tipping from the hip. So we're basically doing a hip hinge, but we're in a seated position. So we shift the body weight forward and then we press through that leg to get ourselves back up. So we're getting lengthening as we shift forward and then an engagement as we press back up through the back of the leg. And using the breath, Hold the next one down just for a little bit of a stretch. Now we can be a bit more passive and let the spine round, let gravity just do its thing. Pressing back up, we'll move to the other side. And you could absolutely do more if you wanted to. So left leg's gonna come out long, right foot presses down into the side of the thigh, keeping the spine long. We think like we're being active here 
and then we shift the body weight forward and press down through that leg as you come back up. Breathing in as you shift forward, breathing out to press back up. So if you've got time, I recommend spending about four minutes on each part. But I do understand that we don't all have that time in the day to do that. So instead of doing nothing, do what you can, do a little bit. Hold this next one down for a stretch. You can fold the spine, or fold the spine, <laughs> fold forward. Please don't fold your spine. That would be a little bit concerning. Pressing it back up to a starting position. So we're going to do a little bit through the ankle now, and then we're going to roll the whole back of the legs. So you're going to come over onto your hands and knees, take one foot out the back, it doesn't matter which one, because we're going to do both sides, and just start to shift forward and back. So you're pressing out through the heel as you shift back, and then rocking the body forward as you come forward, pressing down through the palms, And the option is to press up into a little bit of a half down dog. So you're pressing through the palms, let the head drop, one knee is bent, and then we're getting a nice release through the back of the other leg. Heel might touch the floor, mine is certainly not. And we'll swap sides. Pressing up, the option is to come into a bit of a half down dog. All right, Aria's out of here. <laughs> See ya, Aria. And then releasing that down. We're gonna come and roll our hamstrings and our calf muscles. We'll start with the hamstrings. So we sit onto the foam roller. And this can be a little bit much on your wrists, so just be mindful of that. If you need to take a little break, you can. You can kind of roll from the seated position like that. But I'm not actually lifting my hips off the floor, so there's not a lot of pressure that I need to use through my arms. Otherwise, you're gonna lift up and then roll yourself forward slow. The hamstrings for me generally uh, aren't too bad when I am rolling them. So you can focus more on one side, but if that is too much, just come to both legs at the same time and it will kind of even out the, the intensity a little bit. But if you kind of like the intensity, feel free to shift to one side and just slowly roll all through the belly of the muscles at the back of your leg. And again, if you find any areas and you think, well, that feels pretty interesting, spend a little bit of time there. See if you can relax yourself into it and breathe. is a little bit tight 
So remember we go slow, don't rush this. Just think of all the good energy that you're bringing into your system. move that to the other leg if you haven't already you may need to kind of take a little bit of a break you can come up onto the knuckles as well uh, that can just take some pressure off your wrists and your fingers so if you avoid foam rolling hopefully this kind of gets you gets you foam rolling started a new strength training program so my hamstrings are actually feeling it today using your breath don't be afraid to ex you know, experiment with it a little bit I think oh that's interesting maybe you roll over it nice and slowly a couple of times and then come back to it and hold the pressure Ooh, okay we're going to come down into our calf muscles now. These are generally quite torturous, I'm not going to lie. Whew. So I do recommend doing both sides at the same time. If you're a little bit of a sadist, then you possibly might want to do one leg at a time. Uh, I'm going to start with two and then go into one leg. Calf muscles, whether you're massaging them, getting the massage are like torture. Although being a massage therapist, I do kind of like releasing people's calf muscles because they generally are pretty tight. So just knowing that if you do have crazy tight calf muscles, it's not always the case, but if they are crazy tight, it can be because they're taking the brunt from your glutes. So your glutes may not be firing if you find it hard to kind of uh, you know, get your glutes working in certain movements. Maybe check the calf muscles, check the way that you're standing if you're locking out the knees. If you are doing that, just see if you can focus on softening the knees a little bit when you are standing. You don't have to bend them heaps, but just a little bit of a softening of the knees. That can then bring the pelvis back into a bit more of a neutral position. It releases the pressure of the calves and then it allows you then to get uh, some uh, work through the glutes happening. I'm wanting to speed it up because I know it's going to be really painful. <laughs> so just go slow. Always go slow when you are rolling. Slow and smooth. Smooth is fast. Okay, we're going to move around now to the front of the hip, the hip flexors, the psoas, which is one of the hip flexors, and our quadricep muscles, one of them being a hip flexor, the rectus femoris. So psoas is a really important muscle. Uh, it is involved with hip flexion, but it does come up and it connects into the spine. So if it is crazy tight, if you do a lot of sitting, uh, a lot of training, it can get tight and pull the pelvis forward, meaning we get this anterior rotation of the pelvis. That instantly, I can feel that just jamming up through my lower back. So we're gonna work on 
uh, getting mobility first, and then we're gonna roll out through the quadriceps. We have done the lower back as well, so that can also uh, help ease that off. So you're gonna bring one foot forward, it doesn't matter which one. Tuck the hips under, so think your sacrum going down to the floor, and then just start to shift the body weight forward and backwards. So shift forward and then press out of that with the front foot. So you're keeping the spine nice and long, lightly draw the belly button in. And that front foot, it can actually be out to the side. I'll just show you from the front. So you don't have to be aligned like this, shifting forward and back. You can actually come out to the side and then shift forward if that helps with more balance. And as you shift forward, you might feel something happening through the front of the hip of the leg that's back. And then as you're pressing back, you're literally pressing into that front foot. So we're still getting a nice engagement here of the glute on the opposite side. I love doing this type of thing, sometimes before training. And it just feels like, for me anyway, I really get that glute activation happening. Okay, we're gonna hold into a stretch, breathing nice and smoothly. It can generally be pretty intense. For a lot of people, I start to sweat <laughs> when I'm doing this one. Focusing on your breath and don't think coming you know, too far to the point where you think, oh, that doesn't feel good. Your body would generally let you know, it'll stop you from stretching too far. Okay, let's just add a little bit, do that again. So we'll come in and out of that movement. You may find that as you do this, that there gets more range. Hold into a stretch. Start to get a little bit sweaty. <laughs> and we'll swap legs. So other foot comes forward. Ooh, you may need a little moment just between sides. Okay, tucking the hips. So sacrum down to the ground and then starting to shift forward and back. You can bring your hands to that front leg, but you're not leaning on it. So you're still holding yourself up, nice and tall through the spine. Okay, this is a great way to lengthen and strengthen our hip flexors. So a lot of people, they just stretch and they think they need to just stretch and stretch and stretch and it's not always the case. So we can have a weakness in the muscle which can appear as a tightness as well. Or it can feel like it's tight. Okay, we'll hold into the stretch. See if you can relax. You can even squeeze the glute of the leg uh, on the back leg. Woo. Thank you very much. Okay, let's come out, moving in and out of that one more time. I may have just done an extra round on this one. I apologize if that's the case. Okay, holding into the stretch. Maybe you need it on this side. <laughs> Maybe that's why I need it. I need it on this side. Okay, coming up, we're going to roll through the quadriceps. Ooh. So basically coming into a plank position. And we're going to roll slow from the top or just from above the kneecap. And you're just going to start to roll straight down the center of your thighs. Oh, might look a little bit bumpy. And slowly rolling all the way up towards the front of the hip, hips, and just rolling back down, and 
missed it. You know, kind of just be a bit intuitive with it. So sometimes I feel like I don't necessarily roll the whole way all the time. I might spend a little bit of time on the lower part. And you can even kind of roll around. So the quadriceps, they're not just kind of straight up. They do come into the inner thigh and then around the outside of the thigh as well, where your IT band is. We're not gonna specifically roll the IT band, but we will get it a little bit if we're going to that lateral quad. You may find one side feels a little bit tighter or a little bit more tender. That's pretty normal, so don't kind of overthink it. Just let it be there and just work into it, work with it. And I've probably gone a little bit too far, so just remember, always remember going slow when you are foam rolling. Awesome, awesome job. So please feel free to spend as much time as you need. I do recommend around two minutes for the foam rolling on each uh, body part. And then with the mobility, if you've got the time, up to four minutes on each side. So if you're doing that hip flexor uh, mobility work, you'd be moving in and out of the movement. So an example would be moving in and out. Maybe you do five or six reps like this and then hold into a stretch for about 30 seconds, doing that for four minutes. And you would definitely notice a massive change in the way that your lower back feels, in the way that your body just feels in general, especially if you're doing a lot of strength training. It's kind of a really beautiful combination to do the both of them together. Thank you so much for joining me. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any requests for any type of exercise session that you'd like to do or see me do, let me know and I will see you next time. Before you go, if you love quality active wear that you do not have to pull up, you do not have to worry about rolling down or bits falling out or shirts rolling up, then you need to go over and jump on the link, check out Zaya Active Wear. Today I am wearing the Oak Moss 7-8 light and tight leggings. They are really supportive. They are compressive. So if you do like that compressive feel, the light and tight range are the ones that you need to be checking out. They are high waisted. They come up above my belly button and they do not budge. Whether you are doing mobility, whether you're doing strength training, whether you're doing high intensity interval training, whether you're out and you're running, they will stay put. I've also got the black grid bra on. This is more of a medium support. If you are bigger busted, I do recommend to size up otherwise it's just perfect for everyday wear and for things like yoga things like strength training uh, if you are smaller busted then you could absolutely get away with wearing this for some more of the high intensity or your running type stuff and I've also got the slate racer tank on this is currently on sale so go over jump on the link if you are in need of some premium quality active wear then Zaya is exactly what you need.